Amen. Wasn't that lovely? Amen. Wasn't that lovely? Yes, it was. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Good morning. I'm glad that everyone is here and you are here and didn't get blown away this morning. But praise the Lord for every weather that He brings. How appropriate also was that song of what we will do. On December 16th, 2005, almost 10 years ago, I went to work that morning. And some of you know that before I studied theology, and decided to become a pastor, I did civil engineering for seven years. And so I went to work that morning and kissed my wife and my baby goodbye and went to work. And that morning we had, we had an important meeting. 
and we were sitting around in a table with the, represent with the representatives from the Texas Highway Department and uh, just planning out the projects and the, and the plans that we had, with, that our company had with the Texas Highway Department. And so sitting in that meeting, our supervisor, um, my boss, showing his proposals and looking to us as far as deadlines and times and asking us, can you provide this by this time? And, uh, and so as we were in that meeting, the secretary of the church, I'm sorry, of the office, <laughs> the secretary of the office came in, didn't want to make any noise because it was a, um, a meeting there. And so, but the, the, the door was a kind that had little windows all on the door, of, like, a, like a French door. And so she looks and, you know, people, she's looking for me. And she finally sees me. And she says, like, come. And I said, no. You know? So I just ignore and continue and writing my notes. You know, okay, it needs to be done by that day. Okay, what are we talking? Okay, that many lanes. And so, so my, my buddy Luis, you know, he nudges me. Hey, Marie's. I go, I know, but no, no, no. We don't, we're in a meeting right now. Until finally, she knocks on the window, you know, and, and our supervisor, whose name is Jacinto, you know, he kind of looks and kind of like, you know, go away. And, uh, and she really gives me that stare, you know, like, you come here now. <laughs> and I was like, just, you know, we're almost done. Just, just five minutes, five. And so... And so she goes, I guess, back to her desk and comes back with a paper and writes in big notes, Salite in labor now. <laughs> Come now. And so, so, so then I realized, oh, okay. So then I look at my supervisor and I said, I need to leave. Um, my wife is in labor right now. And he's like, okay, go ahead, go ahead. So I leave. Now, how important was that message for me? Very important. Very important. Depending that my son Daniel was going to be born in just a couple of minutes. And so, you know, we, we today have an important message, don't we? A very important message. And yet sometimes... Sometimes we see the world when we want to share with the message and they're like, oh, it's, it's okay. I've heard about Jesus. Oh, it just come back later. But yet the secretary there of our office was persistent and wasn't satisfied and didn't go back and, with Salit and say, you know, can you call him later or can you find a ride? Just call the ambulance. No. She was persistent to make sure that I got the message. And I'm glad that she was. How persistent are we with an important message that we share as a church? As a church. And that's, that's what I want to share with you today on how Austin has been preparing us that we do have a message and that message is what we're going to look at today. So let's begin with a, another, another word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you very much for your many blessings. And as we open your word, O oh God, open our minds and remove any demonic spirit from here. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. 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 The three angels' messages. We put them on, on, stained, on stained glass or maybe on letterheads. We use them as our logo. And we as a denomination are a movement called to trumpet these messages to trumpet these messages in a world that does not know anything of what is to come. To a world that relies on its own accomplishments, its own enlightenment, its own entertainment, its own philosophy. And yet many of our churches are silent when it comes to the three angels' messages. I was surprised to hear April's testimony of, of their, the students at Southern. But I can assure you, at least in this church, we do talk about the three angels' messages. And we've been talking about last day events this whole year. 
Our identity is rooted in scripture and our message is rooted in scripture. And so here we're going to take a look at the three angels' messages, a brief look, a brief overview look of the three angels' messages. And we will, in a couple of weeks, go deep into the three angels' messages because we cannot have a year of end time events and, and ignore the three angels' messages. Part of end time events is the proclamation of the three angels' message, which is our proclamation as a church as well. We are not a generic denomination, but a, denom but, a, but a denomination with a mission to proclaim these messages. So I invite you to turn to your Bibles, where our scripture reading was in Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. You will not find another message to go out and preach after Revelation 14. If you read Revelation 15, 16 and onward, Revelation 14, 6 through 12 is the last message to go out to the world. So there in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. And worship Him who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and springs of water. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worship the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out how much? full strength into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever ascends forever and ever and they shall have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name but here are the patience of the saints here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Let's not associate these three angels' messages of a work that Elder Ted Wilson has to do and he's responsible for that. Or that our local conference president and he has to do that. Or even much closer, your local pastors and they have to do that. But the three angels' message is, is a message that every single one of us have to do. Every single one of us are commissioned to share and proclaim these angels' messages. So looking at the first one, there in 14 verse 6. 14 verse 6. Then I saw another, another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to who? Every single person on the face of the earth. Everyone. And saying what? With a loud voice. Fear God and give Him glory. For the hour of His judgment has come and worship Him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. This first angel's message, this first angel's message, caused us to remember and give Him glory. There in verse 7. There in verse 7, give him glory. It caused us also to know that his judgment has come. Not is coming, but that has come. And it caused us to worship him who made the heavens, the earth, and the springs of waters. This first angel's message, all of our, all of our beliefs, all of our our pillars, pillars, thank you. All of our pillars of our church are found in this first angel's message. Because it tells us to fear God and give glory to God. Give glory to God in how much? In everything. In everything. 
in what we do, in what we wear, in what we eat, doesn't the Bible says, and whatsoever you do, give all to the glory of God, whether you eat or drink. Even, even our health message is found in the first angel's message, but even more in the third, and we will get to that in a couple of weeks. So here it calls us to give him glory. It reminds us that his judgment has come. You see, when Jesus comes, when Jesus comes the second time and we're looking forward to that coming, he tells us that he brings with him his reward. His reward. And so, for Jesus to bring his reward, he must have, have already done some kind of judging to see who receives that reward and who doesn't receive that reward. And when you study the prophecies of Daniel 8 and Daniel 9, you will come to the conclusion that judgment has begun since October 1844. And so we are living in that time of judgment. And how important is it for others to know that we are living during that time? You see, some may say, well, this is a harsh message, maybe too harsh. But open your Bibles to John chapter 3. The very best known scripture in all of Christian, John 3.16. John chapter 3 verse 16. And some more verses. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And notice verse 36 there in the same chapter. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Even the most common verse here, John 3.16, and the rest of the verses here in, of John chapter 3, tells us similar of these first angel messages. is either having everlasting life or perishing. He, he who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not will not see life. Will not see life. The first angel's message ends with a reference to our Creator. They're reminding us to worship Him who made the heavens, the earth, and the sea, and the springs and water. A direct quotation from Exodus chapter 20 of the fourth commandment. The first angel's message, besides reminding us to fear God and give Him glory, reminding us that His judgment has already begun, but also reminds us and points us back the importance of the Sabbath day holy. And worship Him. That's why we worship on the Sabbath day. God said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, for in it I made everything. And then He said, you shall not work. And He lives all who shall not work. And then it says, for in six days, I made the heavens, the earth, and the springs of water. That's why we worship God on the seventh day because He is our creator. He is our creator. And so here, Revelation 14, the first message to go out is to remind people that God is our creator and to worship Him on the day that He created and that it reminds others that He is the creator as well. And then if you look at the verse 8, there in Revelation 14, verse 8, it says, And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. These two messages are connected. Because, it, you know, it says another angel followed. In order for us to worship God, we must give all false systems of worship aside. If you look at 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, join me there in 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we'll see 
that in this second angel's message, God is calling us to put aside anything that is not true, that everything that is false. It tells us there that Babylon is fallen. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Okay, if I can get there. Second, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, it says, Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who, name, who names the Lord of Christ depart from what? Iniquity. Depart from iniquity. Iniquity. Departing from iniquity. If we're Christ, what relationship then do we have with iniquity? Second Corinthians tells us that. Paul, Paul reminds us of that. And you see, here in the, in the second angel's message, the angel and the message is reminding us that we should not Does everyone have access to the scriptures? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Every single person has access to the scriptures. How hard or how, is it easy or hard to study the Bible on your own? It's easy. The hard part is making time and doing it. But if you're able to read and you have a Bible, it's that simple. Some may not be able to read, and praise the Lord, there is a Bible in audio. So the Bible is available for every single person. Even in Braille for those that may not be able to, to see. But the Bible is available. And because it's available, should there then be any confusion in studying the Bible? In knowing what God has to say about the plan of salvation? Yet why is there confusion? You see, yet here in the second angel's message, the, the, the messenger, the message is that Babylon has fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of her wrath, of her fornication. There was a time, there was a time, friends, where the Bible was not access to everyone. There was a time where the Bible, where you want to learn about God, you had to go to the priest and hope that they told you the truth about God. But today, you can just go online, read the Bible for yourself. If you're, if you're traveling, go to the local hotel and you can read the Bible for yourself. Most hotels have a Bible in the room. You can, buy, you can even buy a Bible at the dollar store. You can. The Bible is accessible to every single person. And yet here, yet we see so much confusion. So much confusion. You see, it's confusing when I think, when I hear a preacher at a funeral and say, you know, our beloved brother or sister is, is in heaven right now and they are happy with Jesus. And then we go over to the grave site that same day. And the same preacher will say, Jesus will come and resurrect our beloved brother and sister. Is that confusing? It is to me. It is to me. Yet the Bible here tells us that, that Babylon has fallen. And you see, there used to be a group of people back in Genesis chapter 11 who did not believe the word of God. And they decided to build a tower known as the Tower of Babel. And there God confused the languages. God confused the languages. Because the group of people that disregarded the word of God. And the same thing happens at the end of time. See, God's people are called out of confusion. The best way to understand and study the Bible is to let the Bible interpret itself. Let the Bible interpret itself. There is so much confusion. Last night, my wife and I were just scrolling through our phones and um, we saw a video of, of a, 
a rock concert. But what, what was interesting is that the reason why I started watching it was because it was, it, it was all by clergy. The, the, the group consisted of, of Catholic priests. And, uh, and on the stage, you, you know, you had a crucifixion, a crucifixion there of Jesus and then the Virgin on the other side and they're literally rocking out. As, I mean, for me, I'm thinking, I'm confused here. You know, normally the Catholic Church is very conservative when it comes to that. And, uh, but yet, it's another eye-opener. It's another eye-opener on how they're merging as well. But yet, yet, it's confusing. Wait a minute, are you clergy, you know, that, that you share the love of Jesus or are we worshiping the devil with this music? You, you can't have both. You can't have both. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter 6 tells us, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, if you join me there, tells us the second angel's message is also found by Paul in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Here Paul gives us the second angel's message in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, where he says, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, that means because of that, come out from among them and be what? Separate. Separate. God's people from the very beginning, from Adam and Eve all the way to Revelation and today, God's people have always been called to be separate. Always. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. We have no relationship, or we should not have no relationship with this world and what this world has to offer. What do we have to do with confusion? We stand to begin with on what thus says the Lord, on what the scripture says. And the second angel's message is a stand on God's word and not man's tradition. And not man's tradition. The Bible here tells us that there should be no more confusion. Babylon has fallen. Everyone has access to the Bible and to study and to read it. And with the help of the Holy Spirit will bring you to the understanding. Knowing and understanding that Scripture interprets Scripture and the Bible does not contradict itself. Have you ever run into a situation when you're studying the Bible and you stump with a verse and saying, well, that kind of contradicts another verse? Has anyone had that in your study? I have. Is there something wrong with the Bible? There's something wrong with my interpretation. And so there I ask, Lord, I'm a little bit confused here. I know that you don't contradict yourself, but how can you say this here and then say this over here? And you know what? It, it requires more study and more research and more study and more research. And asking God, and God will clear it up for us and giving us the answers in the Word of God as well. In the Word of God as well. And so there, 2 Corinthians six eighteen, where it says, I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. You see, God wants to be our Father, our only, only Father. You know, Jesus says that a person cannot serve two masters. And so here God is letting us know that there, there should not be a case for confusion. Everyone has access to the study of Scripture of God. But apart that, you know why there's no more confusion? And this is going to sound a little bit strange. But there's no more confusion because God has given this church the pillars of truth of light. And it is our duty and responsibility as much as we love those who may be lost to share with them the truth of the character of God. And to share with them that there's no reason to be confused anymore 
Because God's word says this and this and this and this and this. Because God's word says that there is no hell right now. Let me share with you what God's word says about hell. Let me share with you about what the Bible says about the secret rapture. There will be a rapture, but it's when he comes. And let me share with you. We have the truth, friends, that these angels' messages to share with others who may still be confused. There is no need for anyone to be confused. And because of that, because, because we are responsible in sharing this light to others, Revelation 14 verse 9 continues with the, with the third angel's message and it is a harsh message where it says in verse 9 then a third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if anyone worship the beast and his image and receive his mark on his, for, on his forehead or on his hand he himself shall drink also shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. Friends, I challenge you to find another four verses in scripture that carries such warning as these verses here. Why is it that God speaks of for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and then here he speaks about the wrath of God poured out in full strength? It's because we come to the time of history, friends, where the gloves are off. The gloves are off, and there is no more time for mixed words. God is being clear with what he will happen to those who align themselves with the beast. And he is clear and wanting to let everyone know the consequences. And the final bell has rung and this great controversy with Christ and Satan must be completed and must be completely clear and this is the last warning to mankind and what a great responsibility for us to have that warning to others at the heart of this message is one word and that is allegiance allegiance at the, at the heart of these three angels messages here the first angel tells us to worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and springs of water. And at the same time, at the third angel's message, it tells us that those who receive the mark of the beast, those who are aligned to the beast, allegiance to the beast, will be lost. Will be lost. It is a message of allegiance. To who do you give allegiance to? God will not pour out his wrath if somebody is not clear. And that's why God has not come because there are people still who have not decided, who have not known, who may still be confused. And guess whose job it is to help them and show them the light? Our job. It's not our job to go and correct them and say, hey, come into the church and you'll be safe. It's our job to lead them to the truth of the character of God and out of confusion. It is at the same time, at the same time, friends, you know, whenever a doctor gives you a prescription, it's to make you better, right? But if you say, no, doctor, I don't want to take that prescription, normally the doctor tells you the consequences of not taking the prescription. At the same time, as we share this message with others, we need to also let them know we don't want this third angels to fall upon them but we need to let them know that it will fall on anyone who does not who does not accept Christ into their heart it is a message it is a message of allegiance it is a message of acceptance it is a warning of what God is going to do the three angels messages is also a message of righteousness by faith. Of righteousness by faith. How can smoke and torment and wrath of God be righteous by faith? Well, at the heart of any conversion, at the heart of any conversion, is a total sacrifice of my will to the will of God. Those who burn in the fires of hell are those who have maintained control of their lives. 
Remember when we talked about the seven last plagues and we said that the piano was the, the Sunday law? We said that the pulpit was the, when the seven last plagues began and the organ was the, the second coming? You see, those who maintain control when the Sunday law hits, the mark of the beast hits and begins and is enforced, which it will be enforced first here in the United States, it will be logical. You want to take control of your life? You want to buy and sell? We studied that. Then take the mark. Take the mark. That is not righteousness by faith. That's righteousness by works. By works. And we've, we've seen already that righteousness by faith is that God will supply our every need. God will supply our every need. And for those of us who love the Lord with all our heart, when the Bible says there that you cannot buy no sell for us, we'll say no problem. Because just how God fed Elijah, just how God fed Israel, he will feed us. Just how God kept the clothes perfectly clean and without um, aging or getting old for Israel, he can do the same thing for us, friends. Absolutely, the God has not changed. The same God who delivered Israel out of Egypt will deliver us from the world as well and sustain us during any time of trouble. During any time of trouble. So the, these three angels' messages are a message of righteousness by faith. That is why... When the time comes, when the, the time comes, when this begins and the mark is enforced, which by the way, I just want to uh, re-emphasize, no one today has the mark of the beast. We do and we did review and we did look at the mark of the beast is Sunday observance. We, but no one today, because part of the mark of the beast there in Revelation 13 is that it is enforced on you. You have no choice. Do you, are you enforced right now to be tomorrow here at church? No. Is anyone enforcing tomorrow all of our beloved Protestants to be there? No. When it is enforced, then people will begin to have the mark of the beast. But friends, praise the Lord because during this time, and I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself, but during this time, the loud cry will begin. And during this time between the mark of the beast and the seven lakhs plagues begin, during this time, many of God's people that are out there will come in here. Why? Because they will see, friends, they will see the truth of God from us sharing it, and many, unfortunately, we are also told that many of our people that are in here will be out. Will be out. I'd like to share a quote with you, but because I don't have the reference, I'll wait till next time. But the three angels' messages is a message of life and death. Of life and death. Put yourself in the shoes of others. Put yourself in the shoes of others who don't know what you know. Would you want someone to share it with you? I would. If we don't proclaim this message, then who will? I can tell you that our Baptist friends, our Methodist friends, our Pentecostal friends, or even evangelical friends aren't going to proclaim these messages. That's why here in the meditation on last day events, page 45, I invite you to read it, read it with me. It tells us, Seventh day Adventists have been chosen by God as a peculiar people separate from the world. We still need to work on that part. By the great, by the great cleaver of truth, he has cut them out from the quarry of the world and brought them into connection with himself. He, made, he has made them his representatives and has called them to be ambassadors for him in the last work of salvation. In a special sense, 
Seventh day Adventists, who? Seventh day Adventists, have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers to, and, and, and light bearers. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. Friends, stop right there. That is frightening for me. Because I am a Seventh-day Adventist. To me, just put yourself, put your name there. To me, to Harley has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. Put your name there. To Salit, to Austin, has been entrusted. Friends, that, if that doesn't humble you, friends, Oh my goodness. God is depending on us. Could, could, job, could God have gotten the job done with angels? Yeah. But he chose not to. He chose to use us because in us sharing the word, in us sharing the everlasting gospel, it transforms our heart to our character like Christ. They have been given a, a work of the most solemn importance, the proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's message. There is no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. Amen and amen. amen. So, everything that we do I know that it may not sound, you know, nice, but some people say, oh, that person has a hidden agenda. Well, friends, I'll tell you right now, I have a hidden agenda. And that's to proclaim the love and the true character and the three angels' messages to anyone else. This Wednesday, we're going to have a Thanksgiving dinner for the community. And praise the Lord, we are getting good number of phone calls coming. And I'm glad that we will provide their need and open the door to them and feed them. But I have a hidden agenda. <laughs> Friend, I don't just want to feed them and say, okay, go. you came in lost, we'll go back lost. I want, to, I want them to see the love of Christ in me. And any little opportunity I have to offer them a door of salvation, to offer it to them. I'm not going to shove it down their throat and say, I expect you here Sabbath for the free meal. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> but just how we open the door to provide their needs, I want to have another door. You want to learn about the plan of salvation. God has a plan for your life. And it's in His Word. And if you like to learn about it, we'd be more than happy to share it with you. That's as simple as it gets. We are... God is counting on us. To them has been entrusted the last warning to a perishing world. Friends, that's if somebody gave you the cure to a terrible disease. Let's say cancer. And you have it in your hands. And those, those little glass, what do you call those? Vials? Vial? Thank you. And you have it there. And they tell you that's the only one. Don't drop it. How, how, how would you feel? <laughs> I would, yeah, I would feel scared not to drop it, but also to do the right thing with it. To take it to the people who need it and to give it to them so they can be healed. Friends, many are spiritually lost and sick. And to us has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. It's a perishing world, friends. Last Sabbath, Pastor Austin invited anyone who wanted to share a glow track to share one. And how many picked up a glow track last, last Sabbath? Every hand should have gone up because everyone stood up and everyone got one. <laughs> now, how many gave that one track this week away? Raise it high. Oh, okay, only about 50% of you. But, but yet everyone said, I'll do it. And all he asked was, just one. Just one little glow track. Let's pretend this is a glow track. Just one. Friends, our desires, Austin's and I, 
is to whet your appetite to share, even if it's a glow track or something with others. And it's a, a simple thing to do. A simple thing to do. We were eating lunch this, this week, earlier this week. And part of, part, of our, part of our bill, after we left the tip, we put two glow tracks. How far will those glow tracks go? I don't know, only God knows. I do know that people do come to the truth of God, even through glow tracks. I know of a sister who came through the truth of God and came into God's remnant church because she found a sign of the time in a dumpster, in a trash can. Somebody obviously thought it was trash, she threw it away, she found it. And that led her to Bible studies and that led her to the church. Amen. Friends, God will use anything to bring people to, his, to the knowledge of His truth. In summary of the three angels' messages, the first angel's message is giving us the good news to share the everlasting gospel, to give glory to Him and worship Him. The second angel's message, only, only follow Jesus. There is no more need to be confused. God has given us the truth of His character. But the third angel's message is the result of not following Jesus. The result of not following Jesus. So these three angels' messages can be summed up, can be summed up in Amos chapter 4, verse 12. These three angels' messages can be summed up what Amos at chapter 4, verse 12 says, prepare to meet your God. Prepare to meet your maker. It's a warning for us to prepare. And how do we prepare? By studying the word of God. Prepare to meet your God, the Bible says. Your God. You see, it has to be personal. God has to be personal to you. He has to be your God. He cannot be the God of your parents or the God of your grandparents, but your God. The one you cry to, the one you pray to, the one you plead to, the one you thank, the one you praise. The Seventh-day Adventist church has to be your church, your own personal church. And that is by spending time with God. And let's not be concerned with the things of the world, but be concerned with our relationship with God, with our Heavenly Father. And this is why we exist as a, as a denomination. As a denomination. The only reason is to share these messages. The truth. Not because we're better, no. No. How committed are we to sharing this message? How committed are we in proclaiming to others that Christ is coming soon? How committed are we in sharing it? In sharing it. Those of you who did raise your hand and you shared that little piece of paper, that little piece of glow track, how many of you, those that rose your hand, how many of you accepted it when you gave it to them? Okay, how many of you rejected it? The person rejected it. Nobody got a rejection from passing on the glow tracks? Amen. So those who haven't done it, you can see that so far there is no testimony that they have been re re rejected. But some may reject it, friends. Some may reject it. And all you do is say, well, God bless you anyway. God bless you anyway. Are we willing to be used by God to proclaim this message, friends? Because Jesus is coming sooner than what we think. And we must trumpet these messages louder than ever before. Every day that passes is a day closer to His coming. It's a day closer to His coming. Friends, I, I invite you, I invite you, that while this next week you enjoy, you enjoy time with your family, you enjoy time in fellowship and eating and, and getting together, that you spend time in these verses of Revelation 14, 6 through 12. 
because begin, in December we're going to get deep into every single angel's message. But here we see just an overview of the three angels' messages of giving God the glory, that everlasting gospel to go to every single person. And that there is no more need for confusion because God is clear in his word. And that we should follow him and not follow confusion. And the result of following confusion or the result of not following Jesus. But besides it all, friends, the message to the world is to get them prepared to meet their God. Prepared to meet their maker. Some may not want to get prepared. That's fine. It is their choice. It is their choice. So how many here this morning want to sound the battle cry? Or want to be part of sounding the battle cry? Friends, I want to invite you that you first get familiar with the battle cry. If you are familiar with the two angels', angels message, praise the Lord. And just be part. There are, there are many ways, many ways in sounding the battle cry. Many ways in sharing the three angels' messages, friends. Many ways. So how many want to commit themselves to sharing this good news? Really, really commit themselves. And I hope you're serious, friends. I hope you're serious. And so I want to appeal to you to study during this. There is no such time as, well, I'm too busy. <laughs> If anyone can use that excuse, it's us as pastors. We are too busy. But no matter how many board meetings we have, no matter how many visits we have, no matter how anointings we do, no matter how many school boards we go to, how many chapels we do, um, how many Bible studies we do to others, does not excuse us of having our own personal time with Jesus. And getting to know what He has for us and to share with others as well. Every single one of us have time. Every single one of us has time. So I want just to appeal to you, friends. It doesn't get more, it does not get more serious than what the meditation says. These three angels' messages have been entrusted by God to us to give. For us to give. And my prayer and desire is that every one of us really take it serious. And next year, next year we will, em we will spend emphasizing, we haven't mentioned it, I don't think so, but we will, we will be emphasizing evangelism the entire year. Every single sermon preached will be on evangelism. Because we have to. We know we talk about proclaiming the three angels message, but are we doing it? Are we helping you in doing it as well? There are many ways it can be done. So next year we will be focusing on evangelism and going to the book of Acts. How great it would be like in the early church when Peter preached and how many came into the, into the church? 3,000 came. What would we do with just even 300 more people here? Praise the Lord. Friends, so I invite you to study these three angels' messages. Ask God to help you in proclaiming them and giving you the way, the light, and how to do it. And He will give you the way, the light, and how to do it. In a loving way, not in a condemning way. It is just a warning. It is just a warning. I could have ignored the sign that was given to me while I was working that Salit was going into labor. I could just ignore it and ignore it and some people will ignore the message. But thank God that she was persistent and says, come out now. <laughs> and you know, Jesus says that his coming is like labor pains, is, didn't he? The more signs we see, the, no, the, the closer we know that Jesus is coming, friends. Let's pray. Father in heaven,
Lord, as we have our head bowed and our eyes closed and the only thing in sound is a humming of the sound system, Lord, we ask that you help us in preparing ourselves, but most importantly, preparing others in the proclamation of these three angels' messages. Lord, you're coming very soon and what a great task and what a great responsibility you have left us. We are not worthy, but yet you're still counting on us. But praise the name of Jesus that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So in Christ's name and in Christ's strength, I ask that you be with us as we share the love to, of others to you. As we share the love of others to them, may we share it as your son shared it here. He, where he shared the truth, but he also shared it with love. He never forced anyone, but invited everyone. And we want to invite everyone that we have contact with, that we have influence. Just an invitation to learning of your true character, of your will. And help us, O oh God, in doing this task. Lord, we still need more pricking because although we are comfortable here, if we were out there, we would want someone to share it with us. So be with us as we share with others, either by glow tracks or by visitations or by conversations or any other way, Lord. Give us the tools to do it. And I thank you, Father, for the gift of your Holy Spirit that gives us the strength to do it. Be with us now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.